When I was asked to present Brad tonight, who also goes by several other names, Synops, Scradley, Brattlesnake, or better yet, Sinopoli, as the, as the Western fans or Western PA often like to refer to him, uh, much to the chagrin of their, uh, of their fans as he would dart around for a 40-yard touchdown or 60-yard throw. Um, I really wondered what I could say to aptly describe the kind of person he is, the teammate that he was. Um, I wondered, should I speak about the highly touted 6 or 4 quarterback prospect out of Peterborough, Ontario, who, upon signing with the GGs, effectively ended my illustrious quarterback playing career? <laughs> I wondered if we should talk about the distinguished 2010 year when we made it to the Yates Cup final, broke all kinds of records, had an outstanding year. Um, but really, these are all kind of facts that you can surmise by a click of a button. Uh, with the brief few moments I have up here, I'd like to paint the picture of the person that Brad was, still is, and what makes him so deserving of this induction tonight. As a player, you cannot have asked for a better teammate uh, or a leader. It's so cliche to say he led by example, but really he did. He was never that guy who's going to give you that rah rah speech, and honestly, if he did, he's terrible at it. <laughs> but he was the guy who would, in the huddle, in the biggest moments, in the biggest games, you can look at him with unwavering confidence. He was, if we needed a spark on offense, he was the guy to do it. And when you need a guy to walk over to you to tell you, hey, it's okay that you dropped that pass, I know that you're gonna get it the next time. That missed tackle, that missed block, he was there. Truly, and I think I speak for everyone who played with him, anybody who coached him, there was never a game that we played with Brad at the helm that we thought we had no chance of winning. Okay. In fact, this guy really had supreme confidence. Uh, there was no window too tight to fit a ball into. There was no finger he didn't take any pleasure breaking. <laughs> Honestly, he made so many rookie receivers quit <laughs> in training camp with his fastballs. Um, the one thing I really appreciate about Brad for a Hall of Famer is it's easy to put in the work when everybody's watching, when the coaches ask you to you know, go into the gym and lift. The thing that really separates you is when nobody's watching, when it's not convenient. And Brad takes that to the T. He works so hard at his craft. He enjoys the game of football. Uh, nobody sees him. And on Saturdays, we got to witness some special plays. It really got to the point where he would make a play. He'd make the unexceptional look exceptional. And he would make a play, and we all looked at it and said, man, that's just an ops. And I think when you get to a point like that, you know you're just a cut above the rest. I think there was no doubt that with his natural talents, he was going to be good at whatever he decided to do. It's crazy. This guy steps on a golf course, he's a par, he's a scratch hitter, steps on a basketball court, best player on the court. Um, he had great guidance from his parents, Nancy and Salvatore, and honestly I knew he was going to be successful. He comes from a great family of successful athletes as well too. There is a reason why he's one of our youngest inductees to the Hall of Fame. I honestly think his legacy will be ever be growing. The best is still ahead of him, and I'm glad to call him a friend and a teammate. Please welcome me in, uh, in introducing Brass and Alpi tonight as a uh, Hall of Fame inductee. Yeah. Zero. Okay. <laughs> I was expecting a couple bald jokes, actually, but uh, so that's good you didn't go there. Um, thank you. I, I want to say thank you to Cyril, obviously, for, for introducing me. Um, you know, if you guys know Cyril, Cyril was obviously a, a fantastic player for us. Um, obviously, a, a great person, um, but a very, very smart guy, and uh, a little too smart for most of us. And and. You know, coaches always used to use Cyril as, a, as an example, as a benchmark um, that none of us could ever seem to get to. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of times in meetings where, where guys would forget a play or a route or something like that. And, um, you know, they would always be quick to point out that Cyril went to class, eight classes in a day, um, went to the labs, 
You know, he used to come in and tell us that he was splitting proteins to try and cure cancer one day, and you know, we're all looking at each other like, <laughs> I don't know what you're doing, but. <laughs> uh, anyways, and on, on top of that, you know, he was one of the hardest workers that we had in the gym. Um, you know, so Cyril, I thank you and, and uh, appreciate you setting the high bar for us that none of us could ever get to, so thank you for that. <laughs> um, yeah, give Cyril a clap. Um, I also want to congratulate Mike and Chris as well um, and on their careers and, and being inducted tonight. Um, you know, I, obviously I wasn't around and didn't watch you guys play, but I've heard, heard many great things and I uh, just want to congratulate you guys. Um, it truly is an honor um, to be here and, and to be inducted and, um, you know, we have such a, such a rich history here with the GGs. And, you know, when you come to these dinners and, and you start hearing the teams, the 75 team, and, um, you know, you hear these other great players and, and CIS award winners and, um, and record holders and, and just alumni that have done things outside of football as well. Um, you know, it, it really, you have a sense of pride that, that you wore the same jersey as these guys in the past. Um, you know, so I hope the guys that are, are going through the program right now feel that same sense of pride and, um, you know, I know that when I played and, and every single every other guy that I played with uh, felt that sense of pride every time we went on the field. Um, I want to thank the alumni committee, obviously, for, for the induction and, um, and for putting this whole thing on. It's, you know, I think it's great that we can all come here and um, we learn the history about our program. I, th I think that that's very important that you know what came before you and, and kind of what set the program up for you. Um, you know, so I want to thank you for, for obviously putting on a great event every single time I come here uh, the last seven years and, and again tonight. So thank you for that. Um, when I was thinking about what to say for this thing, you know, it's, it's hard. There's, there's so many memories that you come back to and, and I know everyone gets antsy toward the end of the night to, to kind of get the speeches on and get out of here. Um, you know, and there's so many great memories. Um, you know, and I, I figured I'd try to keep it short and brief, but, um, you know, looking back, I, I think for things to go well in, in a career, there has to be a lot of luck and there has to be a lot of things that line up for you. Um, and the majority of that I think is, is coaches. Uh, you have to have the right coaches that get you there and you have to have the right players around you and the right support staff. Um, and I was very lucky. I had Denny Pichet that recruited me and, and Dan Laramie. And um, actually before I came to Ottawa U, I was about 99% set on going to Mac. And I figured I'd come to Ottawa U and yeah, <laughs> I know. Thankfully though, it didn't turn out that way. Um, you know, but I, but I was set on Mac and, and I came to Ottawa U just kind of as a, a last visit and, and just to kind of see what it was about. And um, it, it's hard to put into words the impact that, that he had on me. There was just something so genuine about him and, and I knew right after the first meeting that I had with him um, that I was 100% committed to Ottawa U. And I think I surprised my dad, I surprised my family that I just kind of flipped a switch like that. Um, but it was just something a, about the person that he was and um, just the character and, and him talking about the program and, and the direction it was going in. And, um, you know, and he was just honest with myself and, and how my career was going to pan out. And, um, you know, I, Coach, I can't thank you enough for everything you did to, for me. And, and, you know, you brought me into this program. And, um, you know, like I said, it's hard to put into words, but, but just thank you very much for everything you did for me. So I was also very, very fortunate to, um, to play with some fantastic players. Um, and as a quarterback, obviously, the O-line is, is a, a very vital part of, of, you know, doing anything on the field. And um, there's guys here tonight, Shavin, Pat D'Amico, uh, Nick Randall, uh, Taylor Survey, um, you know, Phil Dave. These guys were there for, for you know, my four years and, and um, were kind of just rocks for myself and for the team on the O-line. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of stories that I could tell. A lot of them aren't really appropriate for the setting. Um, but I did think of one, and, and it, it's about Shavin, who's um, sh uh, you know my center for the last two years, and uh, he was a rookie when I was a rookie. And uh, and I can remember my first week of camp. You know, you come in, you're a rookie, you're nervous, everything's moving a million miles a minute. Um, you know, and you, you get very limited reps, so you want to make use of every, everyone you can. And uh, Shavin, I was paired up with Shavin, and Shavin was a left-handed center, so I don't know if anyone's ever taken snaps from a guy who's left-handed, uh, but even if he is a good snapper, it's, it's weird to get used to. 
Um, but Shavin wasn't a good snapper. He, he, uh, <laughs> so there, there's that too. Uh, <laughs> But to be, to be fair, you know, he never played O-line before, sorry, center, and uh, so they kind of moved him last minute, and, you know, he was learning it as he went, and, um, you know, he used to give me the ball with the nose in the palm of my hand, and again, if anyone's ever tried to take a snap, getting the nose in the palm of your hand, uh, it's almost impossible, which it was, and um, at that time, Coach Pichet always made us run sideline gassers if we ever fumbled uh, snaps in a live team, period. Uh, which we did almost every single time for the first two days. <laughs> um, and so, it, you know, it got to the point where all the vets are obviously getting mad at you because you're, they already hate you, first of all, because you're a rookie. Uh, and second of all, you know, you're wasting their time and, and wasting their practice time. And I turned over to a, a quarterback at the time um, who, you know, was a good friend of mine, T. Dave. And uh, I said to him, you know, I can't wait for them to cut this guy. I <laughs> He's going to be gone in a couple days, and thank God. <laughs> so uh, thankfully they didn't because uh, he became obviously the starting center and, and just a, a rock for me on the O-line and, um, and a very calming presence. He was the guy that um, no matter what, no matter what was happening, if I had thrown four picks, which I did a couple times, uh, you know, he would come up to me and just look me straight in the eye, calm as can be, and uh, you know, just told me, don't worry about it. We'll go out there and, and we'll get it the next time. And um, for a quarterback, you know, that's the biggest thing you can have is, is someone that's going to come over and, and give you that confidence. So uh, I love you, Shab. Sorry I had to tell you that story, but uh, yeah, I felt like it was a good one. <laughs> um, so the receivers. I'll talk about some receivers now. Uh, it's the receivers are hard to put into words. They, um, you know, routinely made catches, amazing catches that, you know, it's hard to see because all of our games aren't televised and we don't have the highlights, you know, like they do in other places in the states. And um, so you don't get to see a lot of this. You get to hear about it. And I'll talk about a couple things. The, the first thing was my first year starting in, in my third year and. Um, I threw a corner route to, to one of the guys, Matt Bolduke. So I guess I should name someone, sorry. Matt Bolduke, uh, Steve Hughes, Cyril Legetti. So these guys were all Canadians, um, OUA All-Stars, and, um, and just, just amazing receivers. But uh, I threw this corner route that was a wobbly ball. Obviously, it happened a lot, and it was behind him. Um, and he went up, and it was against Western, and the guy had his hand up inside his face mask. And there's actually a picture from the fulcrum um, of him making this catch. And if I told you, it, like, you wouldn't believe it. It's, it's one of the best catches I've, I've seen in my life. Um, and this was the first touchdown pass I threw. And I was actually thinking, oh, man, this is really easy until I saw the pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, these guys made catches like this almost every game and, and made it routinely. And, um, you know, it, it makes me look really good, obviously, and, and gives me the stats. But um, without these guys, man, I tell you, I, uh, I don't know where I'd be. And, and I'm just, uh, from the bottom of my heart, so thankful that I got to play with all these guys. And um, there's, there is one other story, too, that uh, <laughs> routinely we would, you know, run no huddle offense, and, and I would call my own plays. And, um, you know, they, they had my back a lot of the times that people don't see. Um, you know, I would kind of take off sometimes when they would be wide open, but I would run anyways and come back to the huddle and, uh, you know, would be up on the line. I'd be looking at him to call a play and I would be tired and I would just be kind of looking over at Matt Bolduke to my right and the time would be ticking down and, and Matt would be looking at me, you know, what's the play? And I would look over at him and, uh, you know, I just would go blank and, and I don't know why. Maybe I was tired and Matt would just call his own play. Say, okay, I'm running this. And I'd say, okay. I would just nod. <laughs> And we'd run the play, and I'd throw him the pass, probably behind him, we'd make a great catch, and a first down, and on we went. And, and you know, people look at us like we were a well-oiled machine, but uh, if only they, they knew the little things, which I'm telling you tonight. So, um, no, again, these guys were amazing, and, and I'm just very thankful uh, that I got to play with them. Um, lastly, I just, I want to thank my family. They're here tonight, and um, they don't usually ever like when, when I talk about them, but uh, my sister and her husband are here, and, and my mom, my dad, and um, my girlfriend, Laura, who 
Uh, we weren't together when I was at Ottawa, but she was a volleyball player there, so a fellow Gigi. But um, even just to this day, you know, it's it's tough being uh, being with someone that's doing the job that I'm doing and coming home tired and, and all that stuff. And um, you know, you've been a rock for me at home, and so I appreciate that, and, and I love you guys. Um, so thanks for coming here, and uh, I appreciate your support. Uh, so I just have one one last quick thing to say. It's uh, again, it's a, it's about my dad. So my my dad's a football coach, and um, my entire life he's ever since I can remember. You know, he's always brought me over to practices and and uh, told me these football stories and about you know different players and teams and and games. And um, he always told me about this one story. Uh, it seemed for honestly the last 28 years of my life. Um, about this game that he played and and how close they were to beating this team and uh, and he would play back every single play to me you know I'm a, I'm a kid so I'm just looking at him like oh yeah okay you know and and he's getting really passionate about it and, and you could tell that it, it really hurts um, you know and, and my dad played for the U of T Blues and in 1975 in the Yates Cup uh, this was the game that they lost to the eventual Vanier Cup champions 1975 Gigi's and uh, I didn't know this until later you know I didn't make the connection but um, it just seems like my whole life you've been pushing me in the direction of Ottawa U subconsciously so uh, I thank you for that <laughs> Um, so finally, I, I just want to say thank you to everyone and and, uh, and all the players and, and coaches. You know, there's there's so many guys you play with that it's hard to, to name everyone and, and go through all the memories. But um, you know, you guys and, and and Tiger and Chrissy and, and just everyone involved with the program. Um, you know, thank you guys for for making those memories for for four years of my life. And, and um, it was just an incredible ride. And um, so that's all I can say is, is just thank you from the bottom of my heart. And um, I hope everyone has a great night tonight and, and enjoys the upcoming GG season and the Red Black season. Um, so that's, that's everything. Thank you very much.